Guys, what's up? It's Jason. I was thrilled to get yeah. back into it, but it wasn't the same. Like, yeah, he calls me to play pool, and I'm like, uh, I gotta go live. I'm losing my house. I knew it would all come to an end, but I also would love to work at Starbucks. Would I be on TikTok Live if I wasn't in like a financial hole? Come on, guys. Gotta get something bigger than that. We need a dino. Jason's gonna send spend TikTok money on cigarettes. Can someone make Jason Nash a f***ing DoorDash account? This like digital panhandling on TikTok Live is getting out of hand. Yeah, thank you. I love you, Starshine. Thank you. Jason Nash is begging fans for money after David Dobrik left him in a financial disaster. And now he's going to lose his home and his kids. Jason's at an all time low panhandling on the internet while blaming David for not saving the day. This is a messy and pathetic situation. So let's get into it. If you aren't subscribed to the Let's Get Into It podcast, then you're only getting half the tea. For longer videos, deep dives, and of course, more of me, subscribe to the Let's Get Into It podcast listed in the description below. Now, you guys may recognize Jason Nash from David Dobrik's vlogs because he was David's right-hand man until David ruined his career with manipulation, deception, and harming his friend, physically injuring Jeff Wittick, who actually, I spoke to him at the gym the other day. He's a very kind man, but today we're going to be talking about Jason because he was, you know, an esteemed influencer, if you could say esteemed, at some point, and now his career is pretty much trashed. During its height of popularity, Jason Nash was one of the star members members of the Vlog Squad, a content creation team led by David Dobrik. Jason often appeared in content with David throughout the 2010s and early 2020s before the Vlog Squad essentially disbanded. Now they all established their own influencer pages so they could continue working as content creators, but it wasn't the same without the Vlog Squad. And that's why we see Jason Nash out here like panhandling on TikTok for money. Jason's been quoted saying, the videos that we make, especially the ones I do with David, they're pretty high intensity. So there's always these crazy requests going on. Like we need a tank of hydrochloric acid and a thousand ping pong balls and we need it in an hour, which really does speak to David Dobrik and the shock value and the reason why so many people were left hurt. David was able to make Jason Nash, who's, you know, a little bit older than everyone else he was hanging out with, but I, which, you know, I don't care. I have a bigger problem if they are a minor hanging out with this group. If he's like in his 50s, it's just like, you know, he's like in his like midlife crisis, but he had his good moments and that's why he was able to build a following of his own. Everybody, can I have your attention? I have something amazing for you to witness today. This is my wife. We met out here on Hollywood Boulevard two years ago in this spot. She is three months pregnant. <laughs> today we're gonna find out the sex of our first born. <laughs> I'm hoping for a boy, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I don't know if that was a legit clip or a prank or what that was, but you can see he was pulling crowds. Now, Jason Nash does have two children himself, Charlie and Wyatt. He's been quoted saying, my main problem in life is just balancing my work and my kids. When I'm working, I wanna see my kids, and when I'm with my kids, you feel like you're missing out on something. Which that's very telling to the kind of culture that David Dobrik created. I mean, he wanted everyone to feel that FOMO. Like, if you weren't there, I mean, last night was a movie, you know, you just, you completely missed out on it. and I'm sure that Jason fell for that and he clearly was entangled in it. Jason said it's great being a YouTuber, but then you burn out too. You kind of run out of ideas. Like literally today, I have to make a video for my channel, but I don't have one idea in my head, not one. Which is kind of a stressful situation to be in. I mean, I feel very blessed that we could talk about, <laughs> I mean, I could sit here and talk to you guys every day, all day about so many different things because um, that's just who I am, you know, within myself, but you know, he's an older man. He's got these children. They depend on his videos, making money for them to live. Jason said, another dilemma is knowing when to take the time off. The vlog squad has reached such a massive level. I mean, well, back then racking up millions of views per week. So Jason said it was hard to walk away from the camera. So he actually started to like, you know, not pay attention to his kids and just focus on his life with David Dobrik, which seems so toxic, especially imagine these kids watching their dad make a fool of himself to, I guess, make a little bit of money. Especially, I don't think David paid him like his AdSense from his vlog. So really he was just doing it for the clout. We're at Jason's ex-wife's place and his daughter drew this. It's their dog, it's his son, it's the daughter who drew it, it's the mom, and then this is definitely not Jason. And we think that's the new boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks like he tried to draw you, but he erased you. <laughs> 
Now, when the Vlog Squad started falling apart, so did Jason Nash. Actually, in 2021, fans slammed David Dobrik's Views podcast for increasingly excluding Jason Nash from production. This report from 2021 writes, YouTube star David Dobrik returned to content creation after nearly a year of inactivity with a fresh start, which I'm not going to say a fresh start because everyone was still very much hung up on what happened with Jeff and uh, that Dom guy and all of those situations. But fans were upset that when he came back, a key member of his Vogue squad was left out more and more as the series continued. In 2021, viewers of the Views podcast felt that Jason Nash was getting pushed out by David Dobrik. I think David recognized that him and Jason really couldn't hold a show together, so he needed guests on, and he was happy to dispose of Jason because he's no longer useful to David. Guys, what's up? It's Jason. Go check out the new Views merch. It is sick. Look at this. <laughs> This is where David sits, right here, and then this is where I sit, pretty close to David. I waited for Natalie to knock me out there, but for now, I have held my spot in the number two chair. <laughs> if it looks sick on camera, it, yeah, in person, it's so much fun. I, I just wanted to welcome you back, but we'll see you soon, and uh, yeah, that's it, and go check out the merch. Now, the series wrapped up in 2022 because people were not tuning in, and towards the end, people were not happy. Quote, this podcast isn't entertaining without Jason, and David's laugh is like Jimmy Fallon's. He's laughing so hard at something that's not even funny. That's something that always drove me crazy about David Dobrik. He's always like, oh, 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 like, just doing so much. <laughs> <laughs> you win. <laughs> <laughs> If I was around him, I wouldn't know, like, are you genuinely, like, laughing? Are you happy? I mean, I actually met him once at a derby party for an agency that helped with my podcast. Let's get into it. If you're not subscribed, go get into it. Um, and he was so, like, monotoned, no emotion, like, hi, I'm David. Nice to meet you. Like, and I don't expect someone to be like, oh, you know, like, all excited to, you know. But when you see him on camera, like, laughing like that, I was like, geez. It is really a character. Another person wrote, this podcast is supposed to be between Jason and David. It's turning into David's talk show while Jason sits in the background. If David wanted a talk show, he should have made it separate from the podcast. Here's a clip of Jason explaining a little bit more about what happened towards the end of the Views podcast, because really that was like the end of kind of his career until the TikTok started up. I was thrilled to get yeah. back into it and... Um... But it wasn't the same. Yeah. You know, it just wasn't the same. It's just like we had, uh, he, he had had done it all. Yeah. He really had. He had done it all and it was just like, okay. And he, he tried for a while and his new style was, it was great. It was awesome. And I was willing to keep going with him to, you know, keep making shit. But he just stopped. Yeah. And uh, we stopped the podcast and. Yeah, I was wondering, I hadn't yeah. seen anything oh, recently. I was wondering why you stopped the podcast because I thought, I didn't know if you guys were just weren't enjoying it anymore. Or... Uh, yeah, we just, we just got, we just done it for like five years. Yeah. And years? Yeah. Oh, that stopped. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah, know it stopped that. for now, and then, but we might bring it back. We had a meeting the other day about bringing it back with the new set and stuff. Was yeah. to uh, to make him like the focus of the podcast, and I would be like the Andy Richter. Yeah. Which I, which was great for me. Like I really wanted to do that. You know, yeah. I, I believed in him, and I still believe in him. I still think he's the funniest out of all of us. Jason believed in David, and everyone believed in David, and David made a lot of money, a lot of money, and no one else was really able to keep up. In one Reddit thread, you could read that Jason just admitted that he was going through some financial difficulty. This person wrote, I feel like almost no one in the vlog squad grew their brand during their successful years. I would say they did quite the opposite, relied on David way too much, and when he stopped vlogging, they weren't ready to keep going on. This person wrote, yeah, 100% agreed. Jason is also not the only only member that seems to be spending money furiously. It seemed like especially the men of the group were always buying themselves new cars and expensive items like Rolexes whenever they ran into some money. And that's something that I noticed as well. I mean, they were all spending like they were making David Dobrik money, but they weren't making David Dobrik money. And it was to keep up with the image and the look and the content. I mean, these people can't think of what to do that day. So they need to go and fund it and do whatever to get those views, to get that clout, to get that attention and just to keep it going. But when people stop tuning in, then the money runs out and you can't do those crazy things you used to do. Plus, do people even like care to watch that anymore? If it's not Mr. Beast, like, are they tuning in? This person wrote, if Jason's poor after all these years of success, then he's financially an idiot. And maybe it is Jason's fault, but I do feel like he's built some resentment against David for being in this situation. And here's a clip where it does seem like he has a grudge against David. David's in this like, moment in his life yeah 
where he can do anything. Where he yeah. just parties like every day. <laughs> I just can't do that, man. You know? No, I like, can't either. I just can't do that. And like, I'm not, <clears throat> he has something to celebrate because he's made it. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. We've yeah. talked about this before. Like, yeah. He calls me to play pool and I'm like, I got to go live. And, <laughs> and, I don't, and I don't expect him to understand that. Like, I, yeah. I know I've told him. There's also things that I like say to him and I'm not sure if he hears me. Like, I'll say things like, I'm losing my house. <laughs> and, and he'll be like, oh, but just go play pool. Obviously, it's not David's responsibility to take care of Jason, but he leveraged him for so much content. I mean, Jason was essentially the main character because David was barely like even seen in his vlog. So, I mean, if it was like a streaming service, if it was a show, then like Jason would have some residual pay. Someone said that Jason also lives in one of the most expensive places in the world. He sends his kids to private school and his content is mediocre at best without David. I'm not going to pretend I'm as young as his other viewers, but I've got no interest and going on Snapchat to see a 50 year old hang out with people my age. Also, I've seen some of his comedy sets. Really, they're not amazing. So uh, good luck to him. I guess he's been joking about being broke for a very long time. So people are questioning whether this is part of his shtick or really are you about to lose your home? Because, you know, the way that he's going live on TikTok, it does seem like he is rather desperate. One person has no time for Jason's excuses saying either turn his personal channel or career around or maybe just get a real job I'm guessing he's just too proud at this point to work on someone else's content but clearly whining to the people still watching his content isn't helping him make money either in this comment they say listen to his latest vlog he comes out and says in a very serious tone I'm having financial problems right now he said he and his fiance are likely going to elope rather than endure the cost of a wedding a few weeks ago in a snapchat he said he was going officially broke I wonder what that means this and I know you guys like it we're almost at a million subscribers I knew it would all come to an end at some point, and yeah. I just didn't think it would come so uh, in such a big way. Yeah. And um, the great thing about this age is I've gotten so far that I know now that it's like I, I wouldn't care if it went away. Yeah. I, I don't. I don't. I don't care that much about it. You know. It's like I love to do it. If I'm able to do it, that's great. But I also would love to work at Starbucks. Yeah. You know, like I, I really would, and it, it, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It doesn't define me in any way. It's just like, oh, great. I can go out and make videos and make money. Awesome. Jason Nash would love to work at Starbucks. On record, seriously. <sighs> so does he like the TikTok? I guess the TikTok live he likes more. But really, I feel like that's kind of like, I don't know, dis dismissive and not being real at all. This person wrote, that's what happens when you put all your eggs in a 20-year-old narcissist basket. You watched him be a dick to everyone else and stayed complicit. He also defended David and turned his back on Jeff, who I feel like really cared for him. But he was afraid to lose his meal ticket with David. He's angry that he can't ride David's coattails anymore. Which, like I said, I met Jeff um, at the gym the other day. So nice, so genuine, a real person. I don't know why Jason chose this path, but he did, and that's why we are here today talking about him. This person wrote, from what I remember, Jason Nash struggled with being so unsuccessful and not the breadwinner for his family. His ex-wife makes a lot of money, so while I respect Jason being all like, I need to do it for my family, he's really doing this all for pride. Earlier in, he kept buying his kids things as overcompensation, and the house he did buy is cheaper than most in LA. He had more success as a writer, but it was clear he would rather act like a fool than pursuing writing. So panhandling to him is probably worth it instead of admitting that acting is not the career for him. He's a stereotypical failed actor, and when he had the slimmest chance to do something with his money, he made poor financial decisions. That brings us to today, where we are on TikTok Live, and we've got Jason out here. Thank you for the roses. Thank you for the roses. Uh, thank you for the ice cream. Thank you for the ice cream. Thank you for the Trisha water. The tr just Trisha water. <laughs> so stupid. I can't. Uh, not stu I mean, I know it's valid, but you know, I can't. This person wrote on Twitter, has anyone else noticed the vlog squad straight up internet panhandling on TikTok for the past 10 days straight? I don't think Jason Nash even saw his kids on Thanksgiving, how the mighty have fallen. And I think we can all agree it's a little bit weird for anyone to be on live that long. I mean, I know there's like Twitch streamers and I'm not like shading them. Like, yeah, go on live. But like Jason's on live for hours and hours on end. Like, where are your kids? I'm assuming with their mother. Now, look, would I be on TikTok Live if I wasn't in, like, a financial hole? Mm. I don't know. Probably not. But also, like, YouTube wasn't really working, and um, and I needed to find something. 
OnlyFans. I can't do OnlyFans. They, well, f- yeah, they won't well, let I, me on there. <laughs> <laughs> I've tried. I've tried multiple times. I've tried. Times. They, they said no. On. No, I, I can't. I don't want to do OnlyFans. Yeah. And, and so it was like, all right. And TikTok came to me. They were like, we'll, we'll help you. And I was like, oh, that's oh. good. I was like, okay. And so, yeah. And, and, and it's just like, it is what it is. TikTok came to him? Or did TikTok like give him a little, a little notification like you have enough followers now to be monetized like go live and get some gifts because I believe TikTok it's like half or maybe even more than half of whatever you earn on it. This person commented his fiance also goes live all day long in the same house. Another person wrote effing bleak. Why don't they just sell one of the Teslas that David gave them? This person wrote they're out here begging for the galaxies, which I believe the galaxy is the most you can make from a TikTok gift. This person wrote the one on the treadmill kept yelling easy money as if she was spending a dime on these TikTok gifts for doing literally nothing. This person shared on Twitter that Jason Nash was spending Thanksgiving begging for money on TikTok. And it's wild because there's no way 2017, 2019 me would have believed this. And to give you guys some examples of what we are talking about, here is Exhibit A. Come on, guys. Got to get something bigger than that. We need a dino. Official Haunted Beauty. Uh, Hey, Jason, when will... (laughs) That's funny. Double points now, right, right, right now, guys. Double points. Jason popping off, says Kylie Harrington. Tanner, Jason's gonna send spend TikTok money on cigarettes. This person wrote, to be fair, I would also rather panhandle on TikTok than have a job. Another person wrote, I think I'd rather have a job, TBH, I, I, and I'm so serious. There's honestly no way I could yell and demand money from the internet strangers on TikTok without feeling so much shame which I get it too. And also there's an inherent like purpose in life. Like we all want to have, like, we like feel like we're, we're making a change or we have a, like a social impact. And when you are doing this, like, I feel like he's not getting that same gratification he would get from the vlogs and he's not having that same impact and it must not feel good. Other TikTokers began posting memes and reactions to Jason's lives, highlighting in particular how frequently he was going live and framing the content of his lives as essentially Jason begging for money. For example, on November 22nd, 2023, a TikToker named Sam posted a video about the frequency of Jason Nash lives, implying that Jason is begging for money through these streams. Here's a clip of what we're talking about. All right, please tell me someone else is seeing this man constantly on their feed and I am not alone. I thought, well, maybe he's really funny. Maybe he's entertaining and that's why TikTok is pushing his content on me. No, it's him standing in his kitchen and he's, he's like competing with a person and they're both, they're not doing anything. They're not telling jokes. They're not, he's just standing there and he's, he's trying to get like more points or something. I don't know, but he's just standing there and he's like, yeah, all right, we got, we got 20 more roses to go. Oh, okay, okay, all right, cool, all right, cowboy hat. All right, oh, God, we're almost there. Ah, ah. And I'm, I'm like, I don't, who, first of all, who is paying for this? Second, who, who's watching? This person wrote Jason Nash pushing 80. Okay, he's not 80. He's like in his 50s um, on TikTok live begging for roses. Dude, your kids haven't seen you in months. Ooh, that got real, real quick. This person wrote, he sacrificed his integrity for a quick buck and he made himself dispensable and he was the laughing stock of videos. He set himself up for failure and there's no longevity. Oh, someone added, he also essayed that one dude who I made a video, I believe talking about that. It may not be live anymore, but I made a video about Seth who was a former member who made out with Jason against his will and Jason never apologized to Seth for offending him and making him so uncomfortable. Tana Mojo is a Another fellow influencer who has been shading Jason Nash over his TikTok lives. Tana said, can someone make Jason Nash an effing DoorDash account? If I open my TikTok one more time and see him begging for roses on my live for you page, I'm calling CPS. Have you seen your kids? Have you seen them? I can just hear it in Tana's voice right now. Can someone make Jason Nash a fucking DoorDash account? If I open my TikTok one more time to seeing him begging for roses on my live for you page. I'm calling CPS. Have you seen your kids? <laughs> Have you seen them? And also when they go to school, are their friends like, hey, I saw your dad like begging for a galaxy. Like, and I'm, I know I'm a sellout, okay? I'm not against people doing things for money, but at this point it's like, I would rather see him behind a paywall cheeked up. Like, I just, I just don't get, I just, every single time I've opened my phone, Jason Nash is on live begging for money. And I want answers. Have you seen your kids this month? 
And honestly, Tan is just saying what everyone else is thinking. I mean, she's kind of known for that. Another TikToker posted a video criticizing the vlog squad in general of digital panhandling, making specific mentions about Jason and suggesting that he should... Why DoorDash? Why is everyone saying DoorDash? Is there a good deal? Should I be DoorDashing after this? I'm a DoorDash. I mean, we can all use a little extra money. Maybe some DoorDash got some good deals going on or something. The vlog squad needs to like sell their Teslas or do something because this like digital panhandling on TikTok Live is getting out of hand. Every single time I come on this app, Jason Nash is like, send me more crazy dolphins. Send me more. Girl, call your kids. He missed Thanksgiving. I thank you. I love you, Starshine. Thank you. Uh, Matt, he took us from, uh, he took us to the top 34, which is like insane. Personally, I can't imagine the mental turmoil he must be in being dependent on this feeling like probably like a failure, but also trying to keep this like egotistical thing going that David instilled in him to act like everything's great and he's doing fine. One person wrote, pretty sure he was battling, which is a TikTok game, people for 12 hours straight one day. I'm sure he'll throw that money down the drain in a week. Another person wrote, it's been almost 10 years of this behavior from him too. It makes me wonder if he's just greedy enough to be desperate or really bad with money. Now, Jay Jason claims he's on TikTok because someone from TikTok came to him with an offer to help him on the platform. Jason also claims he's trying to build a podcast and pitch a TV show. When asked if he would start a DoorDash account, he doesn't say he wants to get a job out of entertainment. So really, he's happy to justify his e-panhandling because he believes this is the path he's set to be on. Or high water, I'm going, I'm going to, you know, provide for my family. I don't expect them to get it. No. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't expect anyone to understand what it is. Even, even as I'm sitting here with you guys, I don't expect you guys to get it. Like, it's it's its own community. Yes. It's its own. The people are playing a game. Um, and and every every morning when I get on, the same people are there to see me and see the live and, and participate in it. And it's... Um, it's been amazing. Now, in December 2023, a David Dobrik fan page posted a video in which David visits Jason at his home and discusses and jokes about his TikTok live reputation. Some moments in the video have been described as sad, including a moment where Jason says he was on live but got off because it wasn't going well, and a moment where he discusses how he's trying to dress nicely and to get more viewers and donations. Ooh, it, 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 this sounds sad, truly. Jason! <gasps> Oh my god, I thought you were Wyatt and I got so freaked out. Because you haven't seen him in a while? Yeah. Live streaming. I was, and then it wasn't going well, so I got off. <laughs> Dude, you're kind of becoming a legend on TikTok now. I know. Not, not in a good way. Yeah, but I, I think it's fun. Not in a good way. I, I've seen TikToks with like, take a shot every time Jason Nash is on live. You haven't come over in like a little bit, and I called Joe and I was like, is Jason doing okay? And Joe's like, I haven't seen him on live in a while. And I go, how long has it been? He's like, hours and that's just, that's that's when we start to worry when you haven't been on yeah, that, you look like you just got back from like a christmas dinner why are you dressing so nice well you do better on tiktok live when you look nice is that true yeah where did you get that stat that he do better on tiktok live is that just from testing no someone told me that wait really i met this live streamer and he's a really nice guy he's like hey little tip he's like when you dress nice you'll do better and i was like all right and then i tried it out but then again i didn't make any money today so don't you love how David Dobrik's just like laughing along the way? Like, ah, ha, ha, ha. like, yeah, you're struggling, bro. Like, good to meet me. I've got my pizza place, like making like million dollars off of a Snapchat a day. So, um, something's really wrong here and off and hmm, makes me uncomfortable. Makes me feel like, like Jason was exploited, but he also like signed up for it, but he also was an enabler. So I don't know if I feel bad for him. But I want to hear what you guys think in the comments below. I'm sure I'll see him around town. So if he sees this, hi, Jason. I'll always be nice to him. I mean, you want to come in on an interview? I'd interview. I just don't know what I'd ask you. Sorry, Ben asked. You know what I mean? I'd rather save the studio time for something else. But we're all friends out here. I'm just calling it like I see it. That's what we do on this channel. But thank you guys for tuning in. And I'll see you in a new video soon. Bye, guys.